Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Airplane Anatomy. In this series, I break down different airplanes from their history to their engineering to how they fly. So today in episode 13, we're going to be talking about Russia's newest and most advanced fighter jet that you may have been seeing in the news lately, and that is the Sukhoi Su-57. Now this aircraft was originally designed to rival the most advanced fighter jets in the world, like the American F-22 Raptor or the Chinese J-10. So how exactly does it stack up against the these other airplanes and what kind of groundbreaking engineering went into the design of this new jet? Well, let's get started. In 1979, the Soviet Union was looking for a new generation of fighter jets. This was to replace their existing and aging fleet of MiG-29s and Su-27s. This was especially since at that time, the US had just come out with the F-15 Eagle and the F-16 Viper, and Europe had just finished developing their BAE Harrier jets. And the US was already in talks of developing a brand new fighter jet that would eventually become the F-22 Raptor. Naturally, the Soviet Union didn't want to fall behind, so they decided to hire a Soviet aerospace manufacturer by the name of Magoyan Gurevich Design Bureau to design a brand new fighter jet. However, in 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed, followed by the establishment of the Russian Federation. But as a result, this Magoyan jet program was cancelled. But almost 10 years later, Russia decided to revive the program since there was an even more dire need for fighter jets, especially after the introduction of the F-22 Raptor and the European Euro fighter Typhoon. So in 2002, a Russian aerospace company by the name of Sukhoi, which also developed the Sukhoi Su-25, the 27, and many more Russian fighters, was chosen to develop this new plane, and it was given the designation Su-57. Now before we dive into the design and performance of the Su-57, I wanted to make a quick disclaimer here. Since this aircraft is still in development and also by a country that is not exactly on friendly terms with Western media, so the majority of its specifications are still classified. So with that being said, everything going forward is going to be alleged. Some are coming from Russian state-owned media outlets, others are pure speculation. Now I'll be doing my best to include the sources that I'm citing, but still take it with a large grain of salt. Now with that being said, the engineers of the Su-57 wanted to design the plane to target what they saw as weak points for American fighter jets, especially the F-22 Raptor. So for example, whereas the F-22 is more optimized for stealth, the Su-57 decided to trade some of its stealth for higher maneuverability and also faster detection of enemy aircraft. This was especially demonstrated by what is called thrust vectoring, which are nozzles behind the engine exhaust that can rotate to direct thrust in all different directions. Now this, of course, makes the aircraft a lot more agile than relying solely on traditional flight surfaces. Now of course, on the Raptor, thrust vectoring also exists, but only in two dimensions, pitch and yaw, whereas on the Su-57, thrust vectoring exists for all three dimensions, pitch, yaw, and roll. Hence, this helps the Su-57 be just slightly more maneuverable than the F-22 Raptor. The second main objective of the Su-57 was combat ability. So for this reason, the Su-57 contained a highly advanced direct Directional Infrared Countermeasure System, also known as DIRCM. It's a defense system that can detect incoming infrared missiles and uses lasers to blind them and throw them off course. Now, this system has actually been in use by planes around the world for a while, but mainly on transport aircrafts and helicopters, and this was the first time it was being applied on fighter jets, and hence became one of the highlights of the Su-57's capabilities. On top of that, the Su-57 had a technology called L-band arrays, which is a type of very advanced antenna that helped increase its ability to detect enemy aircraft. But it wasn't all great news for the Su-57. This was since engineers had to sacrifice stealth to achieve a lot of these advantages, and stealth just happened to be one of the most prominent features on the F-22. Of course, engineers tried to make up for this loss of stealth in other ways, for example by using a blended wing body design to minimize radar reflection, and also coating the exterior of the jet in radar absorbing paints. But even despite these efforts, the Su-57 is still considered to be a bit behind the F-22 
22 Raptor and even the J-10 in terms of stealth. And the irony was that it was a Soviet physicist by the name of Peter Yufimsev that is considered to be the founding father of stealth aircraft technology, and he basically laid the groundwork that eventually US companies used to dominate the space. So it was a little surprising to find that despite this, the Su-57 was actually Russia's first jet with stealth technology, but regardless, it was a step in the right direction. The Su-57 took its very first flight back in 2010, but is still undergoing changes even to this day. But in its performance so far, it's been able to reach Mach 2 without the use of its afterburners, making it just a hair faster than the F-22. And also it has a range of 5,500 kilometers, which is almost double that of its predecessor, the Su-37. And it's also capable of aerial refueling to extend this range as well. The Su-57, along with a lot of other Russian fighters, are especially adapted to operate in very rough terrain and conditions. Now, this is a distinct disadvantage of the F-22 that is relatively more fragile. Recently, there has also been rumors of flight testing being done on an unmanned version of the Su-57, with the pilot only there for monitoring. Now, if this were true and Russia is successful in developing the first unmanned fighter jet in the world, it would be revolutionary. This is because currently, the performance of fighter jets is mainly limited by human tolerance of Gs. It's usually around 9 Gs where we start to see impaired judgment and movement. And obviously, without a human pilot, this unmanned Su-57 no longer has this performance ceiling and could allegedly sustain up to 15 Gs. But again, remember, this is what Putin wants you to know. So from what we know, it seems like while the F-22 is more designed for stealth so that it's never detected in the first place, the Su-57 is better fitted to detect its enemies first and strike quickly, and hopefully engage it in close combat where it has the slight upper hand. Of course, it wasn't all smooth sailing for the Su-57. In the very beginning, the plane continuously had problems with its engines underperforming and needed to replace them several times. At one point, even the Russian Air Force said that the marginal improvement in the engines from the Su-37 wasn't even worth the higher price tag of this new plane. There was also a crash back in 2019 that was allegedly due to the malfunction of an engine control system, and thankfully, the pilot ejected safely. At one point around 2007, India even signed a partnership with Russia to develop a variant of the Su-57 for the Indian Air Force. But over the years, the order slowly dwindled until they completely pulled out of the deal in 2018. The reason that they cited for this was the limited stealth and also the avionics and sensor systems failing to meet their requirements. But regardless, even today in 2020, there has allegedly been talks of interest from countries like India, Pakistan, Turkey, and Iran for purchasing these Su-57s. And as I mentioned before, Sukhoi is still changing the specifications of the plane even as we speak today. This is to better meet the requirements of Russia and also its foreign customers. So it's very likely that the finished product will look very different than what it is today. So there you have it, the much coveted and very mysterious Su-57, the brainchild of Russia's fighter capabilities. Now, I know a lot of people want to compare it to the F-22 or the J-10, and I kind of have in this video, but at the end of the day, I think it's really comparing apples to oranges. They're badass aircrafts that have emphasis on different things. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Su-57. Now you may have noticed I've been wearing a pretty cool new Sukhoi shirt in this video, and that is from the store Aero Geeks. They do all types of aviation apparel and swag. Now you see I've gone for the millennial twist here, but they have a bunch of options, and if you wanna go check them out, I actually have a promo code for 15% off the entire store with the promo code Jenny. So make sure to go check them out. But that's it from me, and I'll see you guys next time. Turkey, Iran, 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 Iran.